Hi and welcome to a new video. In this video I want to do a follow up on uh, Wi-Fi 7. So as you might have seen um, lately we've had the uh, Consumer Electronics uh, Show that's in Las Vegas or CES. Um, so basically there's where they pre companies present their latest technology and products that they're bringing to the market soon or it's just as an idea just to give uh, us as a consumer what will be coming in many years time and what is actually capable so we're going to be looking at Wi-Fi 7 so we've got MediaTek and Qualcomm um, they're the two biggest companies making the chipsets and the actual adapters as well as Intel for Wi-Fi 6E currently but I'm sure Intel will do Wi-Fi 7 as well uh, for desktop computers so MediaTek and the Qualcomm ones will be mostly in mobile phones and also they'll be in our uh, routers or routers. Um, so basically you, you'll be able to find them in the latest Wi-Fi 7 um, routers that are coming out. Um, and probably they're probably coming out in the mid this year or uh, possibly towards the end of the year. Um, I know Asus and TP-Link, like we said in another video, I've already got a product line of Wi-Fi 7. So just to go through again about Wi-Fi 7, it is currently still in a draft phase, just like uh, the other Wi-Fi 6C and Wi-Fi 6 previously is when, when they were in draft, uh, actual uh, products were still coming out and it hadn't been finalised yet. But most of the time it's near enough uh, complete with the standard. So when you, you can be confident when you buy it that the firmware will update and then the hardware as well is also future proof. So this is uh, classed as Wi-Fi 7 as we're talking about. So also, as you know, it goes under a specific uh, numbering as well. So that's this is uh, 802.11BE uh, in uh, technical uh, terms. And so basically this has got the potential over Wi-Fi 6E. Um, so it still uses the 6 gigahertz spectrum, um, but it basically boosts the channel range from 160, what is currently used, to 320. So it basically boosts all the extra lanes like on a highway or motorway um, to give you more bandwidth and things like that. So I think in some theoretical uh, tests they've done, you can obtain 48 uh, gigabytes per second um, but again this is you know theoretically um, possible but in a real world situation you probably get nowhere near that and also it seems the speeds are going up so it's good um, especially if you don't have a wired um, ethernet and things like that and cabling around your house like most people uh, either can't afford or just don't have uh, uh, installed so having these faster speeds is really good but again as we've uh, said the problem is is that the higher the spectrum like with the six gigahertz is less the range so of course you still find a lot of devices now um, like your doorbells and everything else either using still using the 2.4 uh, gigahertz band and then some using the five for like ip cameras and things like that so um, it's again it's for things that are going to be uh, data heavy uh, that you're probably like gaming consoles but again we've got our ps5 and the xbox x and they're still only wi-fi 6 uh, and not wi-fi 6c so um, it'll probably be several years until we get our consoles upgraded to this but hopefully once it does i think the bandwidth that will be available on the wi-fi devices will be more than enough because um, i don't think anyone actually needs up to 48 gigabits per second um, across there um, unless you're a huge business transferring information so as we can see here like uh, the news that's come out of uh, MediaTek and around their chips so they've currently got two chips that are coming out uh, I think it's the 380 model and the 880 um, so you can see these were announced uh, a little while ago and they, were, they did tests uh, at this uh, kind of uh, road show and it showed you a uh, the two de Wi-Fi 7 devices with their ch uh, MediaTek chipsets in and it was getting 13 gigabits per second between the two. Again, it doesn't go into details of how, you know, they, they actually put them together on the test. So probably they could be next door to each other and in a, a lab environment. So um, and not in a, probably in a realistic way. But again, 13 gigabits per second is very impressive. I think it's more than most people. 
So we'll probably hopefully get towards the end of the year when we'll probably see some devices start to come in with Wi-Fi 7. Um, as we see that, as we were saying, MediaTek have got their chipsets normally going uh, routers and then also Qualcomm we'll go into in a minute. So as you can see here, they're, they're ones here, they've got about they're upgrading. So now you'll see these new chips that's also supporting um, anything from five uh, to 10 gigabit ethernet and then multiple ports as well. So it's not just limiting them as well. So that's good for small businesses. And hopefully the prices shouldn't go up too much. But again, these chipsets you will probably find in the very high end of like the Asus and the uh, TP-Link uh, routers like Wi-Fi 6E is currently. And it will gradually over the years uh, come down uh, to normal uh, priced uh, routers and things like that. Moving on to Qualcomm, so it's probably one of the best known ones um, outside of uh, the ARM processors that actual um, the M processors that Apple use. Um, you'll find here Qualcomm making everything for Android and also in the uh, routers as well. So you see here they've got their different chipsets. So this one here is the Fast Connect 7800. So this will support the Wi-Fi 7 and the 2.4, the 6 and the 5. So it's like their Wi-Fi 6C chipset right now, Qualcomm have in your mobile phones. So this will be basically for your mobile phones more than uh, uh, our routers and things like that. And you can see here, they're just telling you about the latency it's going to provide um, and everything else. And again, the speeds that you can potentially achieve. Um, and then also all the new Bluetooth uh, standards that it brings as well. So it's always good to see. These are actually chipsets that will actually probably go into our uh, routers. As you can see here, there's different versions of them. There's some tri-band and then quad-band versions. And you can see the difference in speeds as they go up. So you can see like some of the other ones where they've got more high-end, um, where they'll perhaps go into different uh, routers, but also into um, perhaps more business-orientated uh, hardware that it will go into. But you can see like they've got the home version there, the 10. And again, these ones still are impressive speeds. You can come up to here. So if we just go to have a look at this one, see this is the, the highest, seems to be the uh, top one. And this is their uh, Networking Pro 1620 platform. And again, it's designed up to 33 gigabits per second. Um, and again, this is using the uh, 320 megahertz, as we said, channels and the Wi-Fi 7 standard. And you can see here, basically it goes through the information about having multi-link operation and 4K QAM as well. So it just gives you more bandwidth basically. And you can see here how they're actually saying it's ideal throughput up to 2000 clients simultaneously. So you can see how this is really good uh, for businesses uh, that have uh, offer Wi-Fi and things like that. But you can see here that also the information, um, you can pause this, I won't go through everything so you can have a quick look. And you can just see what they're expected, the actual kind of standards and what you can achieve with them when they're building out the uh, routers with these chips so you can see here the memory can probably be upgraded now from ddr3 to ddr4 and you can see the bandwidth as well it's going up and then the type of memory that it supports and also also the streams and also the actual standards you can get from here so again as i said these ones both from mediatek and qualcomm um, they allow basically uh, more bandwidth to go through as well. So you can, I mean, as we've seen in the high-end uh, routers uh, in a minute, uh, for Wi-Fi 7, you see now we've got multiple 10 gigabit Ethernets, uh, ports and everything else. And then uh, that's even for your internet. Um, so these ones that are coming through are going to be really future-proof um, because there's not many um, ones that are going to actually... Um, going to <laughs> going to uh, have this speed and everything else so it will last a very long time so moving on to uh, just uh, the Wi-Fi 7 as we said you can see here from TP link they've got the information here of the uh, different standards and how it jumps up to 46 gigabits per second under Wi-Fi 7 and also for gaming and for VR I think most important it will probably benefit is the latency is much lower between them using the Wi-Fi 7 standard. Again, this is all depending on the interference and everything else, as we can see. I do have a good chart here just to show you the difference between Wi-Fi 5, the 6, the 6E, and Wi-Fi 7. So as we said here, even though they're presenting the actual um, 
routers now um, and everything else for sale and everything they are expected probably more 2024 when they actually come out um, so you can see here the difference in the speeds and everything so it is a humongous jump that they're actually doing so as we said here Netgear's got a, a good uh, offering as well of the difference in there and the comparisons they do have some models out now um, for Wi-Fi 7 so it just gives you an information of how it works between the two bands and their multi-link operation so this is a standard thing not just Netgear um, this is the Wi-Fi standard on how it's integrating and making things quicker so now moving on to the uh, Asus as we see here they uh, released uh, two new products that you can see here that will be available in the future these are Wi-Fi 7 uh, routers um, so basically you can see here there's two different versions there's the Republic of Gaming so of course that's going to have RGB so that makes everything faster especially with gaming uh, so it does and also to be honest it is, <laughs> it, is uh, it does look rather uh, aggressive these two both these models are, are very large so I think they are based on their design and size the uh, same as the uh, AXE 16000 um, so as you can see here it's got multiple antennas um, they're non-removable so you can see the different versions so if we just have a look at the Republic of Gaming one you can see here again uh, the layout so it's really nice layout they're on the proper gaming kind of orientated and specific to it so again just be uh, wary that this thing is very big and quite heavy if you're putting this on a shelf but again if you if you want to stand out in the living room and everything else um, then this is the one to have so as you can see here from the specifications it does have the Wi-Fi 7 uh, or the 802.11be uh, standard so this one is the uh, as we said there's two versions this one's the uh, gaming one so it's going to have their gaming interface and their um, different specific uh, features they have there for gaming so you can see here they have their VPN fusion that's on both the route normal router and this one but you also you have triple level gaming acceleration uh, mo mobile gaming mode and and also their AI mesh um, but also their security uh, they have for AI protect um, that's very good that they're still actually free there seems to be a, a trend of companies trying to charge us a subscription so once you buy a high-end product like this you expect it to be yours and everything to be um, working but I know there's, there's some things where they seem to be wanting to have a uh, get money from people every month uh, to boast, uh, boost their kind of profits um, and I know they're a business and everything but it's not very good for the M user you know so this is why it's good of Asus they've supported the older uh, routers for a long time um, with their features and everything else and still given security updates so you can see here on the if we go to the uh, actual tech specs you can see they've upgraded now so the previous probably top of the range one was the uh, GTAXE 16000. Um, so this one here, because it's not released yet, they don't have many specifications on here. But if we just go back to the features, um, again, <laughs> there's not much. So literally, because it's not released yet, so I can just tell you is there is that it does have uh, three now 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. Um, and also it has uh, so that includes the 10 gigabit for the WAN and LAN port so that's good so you can swap one of the 10 gigs uh, between using it as your WAN or LAN because sometimes if you've got a uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet um, or even you've got a NAS and you've got a few devices now seem to be getting more and more you'd be able to have add-ons to products um, that are capable of 10 gigabit having them more ports is good and of course most people's internet is no higher than one uh, gigabit uh, for either um, for your internet that's coming in so it's good that you can swap out and use all three uh, for your LAN and then for a WAN you can actually change it to one of the one gigabit um, ports so that's really good to see again uh, I presume they're saying about the triple level gaming acceleration is probably the same as what we've got now where they have like a VPN uh, service and then also they have some prioritization around quality of service features um, and then also basically having a look at the mobile gaming seems to be a new feature as well so this has just been a quick rundown of the actual uh, you know Wi-Fi 7 and how it's getting on and how it's progressing and what it's going to do for us in the future so of course this you know it does seem a huge leap um, in speed and everything else but again we have to take it with a pinch of salt on them speeds um, you know currently we're supposed to be getting uh, in gigabit speeds as well and um, 
I think, you know, we're getting there. You know, when I've done my Wi-Fi 6E testing, um, I found that, that, you know, for my tablet and everything else, I can get around 1200 um, to up to 1500. Um, so it's 1 1.5 uh, gigabits per second on Wi-Fi. So um, the only problem is, is again, it's Wi-Fi, so it does have interference. So it's unlike Ethernet uh, or cabling um, that you use, that that will be a much more stable connection. But we're getting there, I think, with the, the different devices. And I think the speeds will eventually uh, outstrip what we actually, the speed we need. And I think it will just be a selling point that we can actually get to 36 gigabits per second. So one question I normally get when a new standard comes out, is it worth uh, waiting for Wi-Fi 7? So if you've got a device now, um, so if you've got Wi-Fi 6C or Wi-Fi 6, um, I would say as you know, of course, wait, waiting for Wi-Fi 7. If you do have an older one that's Wi-Fi 5 or even 4, then yes, uh, um, upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 or 6C currently because Wi-Fi 7 won't be out probably until earliest mid 2023 and then the actual device standards and the products that actually with these chipsets in won't be coming out until probably 2024 so it's not no actual point of waiting that long for just for Wi-Fi 7 uh, to be honest Wi-Fi 6 and 6E add so much benef more benefits over the previous standards um, if you do have uh, something to go well they go back to Wi-Fi 5 then yes, it is worth the upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 and 6C, but I wouldn't hold out uh, for upgrading to, you know, from perhaps a 5 um, to, uh, or a 6 to going to Wi-Fi 7, um, because it's not going to be, yeah, the, the, they've got a lot of more bandwidth and everything else, but Wi-Fi 6E um, is probably the best standard that we have right now, and, um, I, I, you know, I don't see... There's any need for uh, Wi-Fi 7 currently, and it won't be for many years when we start to adopting. As we see, Wi-Fi 6E has been out for a while, and currently there's a minimal amount of devices that are actually supporting it. Uh, I think there's Apple have just started with their um, iPad Pros, um, and again, that's the top of the range iPads. Um, so, and then top of the range phones with Qualcomm chips or MediaTek are starting to come through, same as their tablets. But again, um, it doesn't add to a normal user. If you're a normal home user and you're not an enthusiast, then uh, I would say just go for a normal Wi-Fi 6 uh, router. Or if you can um, have the pay the extra money, then go for Wi-Fi 6E. Okay, thanks for watching. And I hope it's been a bit useful. Again, if you have any uh, comments, I'd like to know what you're thinking about on these uh, new Wi-Fi 7 routers that seem to be... Uh, every standard seems to be huge upgrades and things like that, but actually is it benefiting us or is it just uh, more marketing and things like that? Okay, thanks for watching again and have a great day.